Good day viewers, welcome to this interesting program on Ospoli TV tagged um, Plain Talk. I am Abraham Asiyobi and uh, on this program we'll be, we are going to be discussing um, issues on education, on politics and economic of our country. And today in the studio with me are uh, our important um, guests and um, I also have my co-anchor with me, which who is my name is Sanjay Josna So we are here to discuss about uh, politics and uh, economic and education. So stay tuned to us, TV. And um, to my um, invited guest, I would like uh, my invited guest to introduce um, himself to the viewers at home. Yeah, thank you so much, Ashinobi and the co host. My name is Levi Anoluapo. I am the I'm a student of Ojuste Polytechnic Uri and also the former editor in chief of the Nama Course Editorial Board. Thank you for having me. All right, thank you so much, sir. Um, um, we have some series of questions to ask you. I'll be glad to answer. All right, we're going to start with um the current issue affecting the citizens of the Nigeria, and um, I would like us to trace back um to last year um declaration of the Mr. President. Um, Tinobu, um, he, on May 29th, he declared that the first subsidy has been removed. And since then, um, the first subsidy re removal has been affecting the economy of the Nigeria and the, um, let's say generally, everything about Nigeria, it has been affecting even, even the citizen. So what can you say about the first subsidy removal and um, that has been affecting the economy of the Nigeria? Okay, first. Um, I want to be conscious of the language I use okay. because of um, the media setting. All right. uh, I would have loved to say that the removal of first subsidy was a senseless one in the first place. Okay. Because I always say, like my father used to say that, the only scam in Nigeria that an ordinary Nigerian enjoy or is a beneficiary of is the first subsidy. Okay. Nobody is trying to argue that first subsidy is not a scam. Because in the first place, we are we are an oil producing country. It's not as if we are going to another country to bring oil. We produce oil yeah. in any um, level at all. We should not. There should not be anything like subsidizing of petrol. Okay. Because I feel we are the country producing this um, commodity. If there should be anything that the government will name what they are doing for us, it should be that they are making us live a normal life. Subsidizing what you produce yourself. If they are talking about gold that, that belongs to the Arabs, we say, okay, you can subsidize that because it's actually coming from an external territory. But in Nigeria, we produce oil. And note that it is not only petroleum that is extracted from the crude oil. Sure. We have the petrol, we have the kerosene, we have pe um, gel, jelly yeah, that yeah. they use for hey yeah. and the lights so at the end of the day you present only petroleum to us and you still make life difficult to us so i would say it is not a good policy from mr president the um, tinubu because yes most of the presidential candidates noted that they will remove it but i would say that ever since he removed it what has it yielded and even to think about it i think um the essence of removing first subsidy is to um, the money, I think the money generated on the first subsidy removal should be used on the educational sector of Nigeria. What improvement have you seen yourself? Like, that, that's, that's the main issue. That's the main issue. That's the irony of it all. Okay. Presenters, you will agree with me that ever since they have removed this first subsidy, nothing has gotten easier. Nothing has gotten better. Economically, academically, Financially, as a country, what is our standard of living? That's where you look at it from. Sure. People who have businesses, how are they coping? You, as a young Nigerian, calculate how much you used to board a bike from your, your house to your place of work to school. Look at it. Is it, really, is it really cool for anyone? It is not. So I believe that it is not a very good policy. It is a wicked policy. It is an oppressive policy policy not just for not just for um the working class not just for the business owners but for all nigerians because look at dangote last week at uh, the, the the last interview of langote i watched before the recent one yes. he was almost in tears because of the economic hardship the way it is turning on his business so i believe that 
that for subsidy you Okay, back, okay, Mr. 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 Levy, what um what kind of um solution can you um can the can the um federal government prefer on this issue? On what any kind of yeah, thank you. On any kind of issue, yeah. the best solution is to listen to the citizen. Okay. Now what are the citizens of Nigeria saying about this your new policy? They say they don't want it. Let now look at look at the statistics now. Now you said you removed this um, subsidy yeah. on four. The money that you would have used to pay for the subsidy, where have you channeled it? What else has it been used for? Nigerians are asking this question, and Nigerians have been saying that return the subsidy. Return the subsidy. Look at the presidential villa today. They don't pay for petroleum. Sure. So that is, I feel that is where the sense insensitivity comes in. No Nigerian, is either president or anybody, should enjoy extra benefit because it will make them be blinded to the pain of common Nigerians who are paying for these commodities. So I believe that there is no need paying for subsidy. Just make our refineries working. After making them working, be more transparent. After transparency, make life easy. For Nigerians, that's the that's the best solution. Listen to Nigerians. All right, thank you, Mr. Levy. I don't know be my co-presenter a question to ask our guests. Mm, I have one question to ask you. Okay. But me, should be our Mr. Mr. President have like four years to 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 spend now. So me, I'm I'm thinking that maybe we should wait for him. Maybe she a bit there. He has something to do for we. Please. Okay, I get your question. Yes. Now let me be let me be fast. Let me control my language still. Okay. You see that mentality of let us wait for somebody to make things better is a selfish mentality. This person you are talking about is, does not pay. I can tell you, he does not use his own money oh, to so buy petroleum. He knows what he's doing. He does not know what he's doing. And even even some people are saying that um um probably built Lagos State and actually being a merger as the president of Nigeria is, is going to build Nigeria. Now that is where the misconception that is where, that is where that is where that is where the political scam and political biasness okay. on our mentality as Nigerians comes in or sets in. Now talking about Tinumbu with all sense of um, respect and responsibility saying that it built Lagos is a very shallow thinking. Tinubu did not build Lagos. Why did I say that? Okay. Now, looking at the pre-colonial administration, before we have this, what is called the um, colonial administration. Okay. Now, Lagos was already Lagos. Lagos was already the center of business for the southwest region. Okay. Talking about the colonial administration where we have the um, all this um, colonialism in Nigeria, they had their capital state in Lagos. Was there nothing in Lagos before they can make it their center? Now, if they are coming from the British headquarters to Nigeria, where they come straight is Lagos. Their center of business then was Lagos. Center of commerce, Lagos. They controlled everything during the colonial administration, basically from the orbit of Lagos. So, how do you say that a single person with all of this achievement that Lagos has accrued over, over the years that he built Lagos. Now, leaving the colonial administration, coming to since 1990 downward, 1999, sorry. We have had different governors. We have had the governor sure. before Tinubu. After Tinubu, we have had Sonwolu. We have had Fashola. We have had this other man. Um, um, I can't remember his name now, but uh, what I mean is that will you, it is an insult to the dexterity of these people. To say all of their collective work and now bring it down to somebody that he built it. Do you know what? I was I was a resident in Lagos when Fashila was the governor. I would say, although I was still younger when Tinubu was the governor, but what Fashila did in Lagos can be placed side by side with what Tinubu did in Lagos. So it is a selfish mentality that Tinubu built Lagos. In the pre-colonial administration, Lagos was Lagos. Colonial administration, it was the it was the capital. Now, after that, before Tinubu himself and after Tinubu, Lagos still remained Lagos. The only thing I can say that Tinubu did was raising the IGR. What do I mean by IGR? Internal, gener internally generated revenue. That was the only thing that he did fine. 
and every government has their own unique wins. So that's just it. Tinobu did not win the ghost. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we are going to take a pause here and we are going to go on a commercial break. And after that, we're going to ask the last question. So um, stay tuned. Thank you. Um, welcome back. Um, Mr. Lebi, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you thank for you. your time. Thank you for having me. Um, and thanks for answering our question. Thank you for So the last question is, um, how much does um, school management should um, necessitate learning of entrepreneurship in um in um Nigeria educational sector and how is its impact on okay. the Nigeria educational sector? Okay, Mr. Ashinobi, thank you for that question. It's a very brilliant talk. Um, I would like to state okay. categorically that Nigeria is not doing well when it comes to entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial education. Okay. When, when you go to um developed countries such as the United um, Kingdom. United States of America, you go to China, you go to Italy, you go to all these um, big countries, successful countries. You see that what they, what they um, put, what they set priority for is entrepreneurship. What can you do with your hand? What can you think with your brain? What, are, what can you deliver? Sure you understand. Now, I'm talking about how much should the management of Oshu State Polytechnic away to, um, to prioritize Entrepreneurship education, I would say, it should be 100. It should be the most, the most, uh, the cause that is most paid most attention to. Because look at the level of unemployment in the country today. Look at the, look, just look at the alarming rise. Yeah. And there is no way you can separate unemployment from criminality. Sure. People who do not have a source of income, income. a stream of income. They say I do. They stay hungry. They will do something illegal. Sure. So I feel the management should set that that record straight. Okay. Every student, and I want to state again okay. that what we do here is a very federal entrepreneurship education. We want it to be practical based. You give students certain assignment, and you must deliver. They maybe record it. A teamwork. Let us see how you not, do it. Not, a not, day not just a day practical for all students. Sure. It is. It is not. It is absorbed. It is absorbed to a good extent. But I feel they are doing well. But they need to do more. Let students prove that what you are teaching us, we can use it and get money. Not just um, we can do it. Okay. Let us let, let let them prove that they can actually use it to advance their own personal life. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Alebi. I don't know. Maybe. Um, my co-presenter has anything to say for, because of our time. Okay, my, my question was on like, what can be done to support small business and foster entrepreneurship? Okay, thank you. Um, we have small scale businesses, we have medium scale businesses, and we have the large scale businesses. Now you are talking about small scale businesses. It is important for us to understand that the government, government of successful countries, that I have mentioned earlier, they pay attention to small businesses because they are the lifeblood of any working country. Any country whose small businesses are not successful, the country can never be successful. So I feel the government should empower okay. through loans, okay. through empowerment, and also our banks. Our commercial banks has a lot of roles to play. And the reason why I say they have a lot of roles to play is because look at the interest rate of the loan system of our commercial banks in Nigeria, it is very it is very sad, it is very extravagant. So I feel that the government should create empowerment, okay. loans for small businesses and small business owners too should embrace partnership. Yes, you can, when you're starting a business, it's not possible for you to just amass the role of that, that, that a statue of Dangote or Tedola. No, you start. And when you want to start, you know your capacity. In order to grow your business, learn how to partner. Then how to link. You sell Gary, I sell sugar. But you don't have money to sell sugar. Why not partner with me? Let me bring my sugar to where you sell your Gary. So that people who bought your Gary can also purchase my sugar. Sure. Sure you understand. So it will actually help the business to grow. Alright, thank you, Mr. Levy. Thank um, you so much for asking. To our viewers at home, I think we you've enjoyed our program and um we are going to be drawing a curtain on today's program and um we want to appreciate our guests thank you. for thank um, you for having me. Thank for you. Me. Come here and um, I hope when next we call you, you are going to answer. For sure, so, certainly. Uh, please 
once again tell the viewers your name. Ah, thank you so much, uh, viewers. I remain my humble self, Lebi Anoluapo. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, you are on Ospoli TV. I am Abraham Asinobi, and my co presenter. I am Justina Adichoro Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you.